Hey everyone, welcome back. Now that you know how to add and subtract rational expressions that have like denominators, let's look at what to do when they have unlike denominators. And what we have to do is rewrite them with common denominators. So to do that, you need to find the least common multiple. And we have three steps here on how to find the least common multiple if it's not given to you. So step one is to factor each polynomial. Step two, list each factor the greatest number of times it occurs. And then step three, find the product of that list and you have your LCM, your least common multiple. Well, our first two examples give us the least common multiple. They're telling us to rewrite these rational expressions so that it has a given denominator. So this first example is telling us if we have the rational expression 1 over 4x, it wants us to rewrite it so that we have a denominator of 8x cubed. And to do that, we need to determine what did we have to multiply that first rational expression by to go from 4x to 8x cubed. So to go from 4 to 8, we had to multiply by 2. And to go from an x to an x cubed, we have to multiply by x squared. So if you multiply 4x and 2x squared, you get 8x cubed. That's how we got our new denominator. So to get our new numerator, we're going to take 1, the existing numerator, and multiply it by 2x squared. So that gives us an equivalent expression of 2x squared over 8x cubed. Now let's look at example 2 which is a little bit trickier because it wants us to rewrite with a denominator that's this trinomial. We'll notice that this trinomial is a perfect square trinomial, so it actually factors to x plus 1 times x plus 1. So we need to go from the current rational expression, 2x over x plus 1, to this new rational expression, with a denominator of x plus 1 times x plus 1. And we needed to multiply that first denominator by what to get to the second denominator? Yeah, x plus 1. So we need to multiply our numerator, 2x, by x plus 1. And that'll give us our new numerator. So we're going to actually multiply that out. So if we distribute 2x, we get 2x times x, which is 2x squared. And 2x plus times 1 is plus 2x. And then we know our denominator, x plus 1 times x plus 1. It is the perfect square trinomial, x squared plus 2x plus 1. So now we have rewritten this rational expression to have that given denominator. Now, what if we're not given a new denominator? We're just given two rational expressions and we need to combine them. That's where we need to find that least common multiple. So in example three, we're given two rational expressions, one over x and one over y, and we're subtracting them. So first we need to identify the factors of our denominators. Well, that would be x and y. So our least common multiple is going to be the two denominators, x, y. So we know that we're going to have two new fractions with denominators of x minus or x, y, and we're subtracting those two. So now we need to look at our first rational expression. To go from a denominator of x to a denominator of x times y, we had to multiply by y. So we also have to multiply the numerator by y. So if we multiply our numerator by y, 
we get y times 1, which is just y. And if we look at our second expression, we started with a denominator of y, and we need to get to a denominator of x times y. So we need to multiply by x, and x times the current numerator 1 is just x. So now that they have a common denominator, x, y, we can combine those numerators, which is y minus x. So this simplifies to y minus x over xy. Now let's look at example 4. Remember, the first thing you need to do is factor any polynomial or binomial that can be factored. So we need to factor this first denominator. And notice it has a GCF of 2. So the numerator stays as 1, and our GCF, 2, gets factored out, and we're left with the binomial x plus 2. And then our second expression stays the same. 3 over x plus 2. Now comparing those two denominators, what would the least common multiple be? Yeah, it would be 2 times x plus 2. So our first rational expression doesn't change. It's already in the correct denominator of 2 times x plus 2. But our second needs to be 2 times x plus 2. And for it to go from a denominator of x plus 2 to a denominator of 2 times x plus 2, we have to multiply by 2. So that means we also have to multiply the current numerator, 3, by 2. So our first rational expression stays as 1 over 2 times x plus 2. And our second becomes 6 over 2 times x plus 2. And remember, since they have common denominators now, we maintain that common denominator, 2 times x plus 2, and we add the numerators, 1 plus 6, which is 7. These questions asked us to leave it in factored form, so this is as factors as it can be. So we leave it as 7 over 2 times x plus 2. Let's move on to page 2 and look at some more examples. So example 1, notice we have two very different denominators, and nothing can be factored. None of the numerators, none of the denominators. So since we have two very different denominators, our least common multiple is going to be both of those denominators multiplied together. So we can rewrite those two fractions, and we know that they both need to have the denominator n minus 1 and plus 1. And we're adding the two fractions, so we have the addition sign in between. Now, looking at our very first rational expression, what did we have to do to get to a denominator of n minus 1, n plus 1? Well, we had to multiply that by n plus 1. So we need to multiply the numerator 5 by n plus 1. And then we do the same with our second rational expression. To go from n over n plus 1, we needed to multiply by n minus 1. So that numerator, n, needs to be multiplied by n minus 1. We're going to distribute, so we get 5n plus 5 over our n minus 1, n plus 1 plus our second numerator, which is n squared minus n over n minus 1 times n plus 1. And now, because our denominator remains the same, n minus 1 times n plus 1, we can combine those numerators. 
So we have 5n plus 5 plus n squared minus n. Now the last step is to combine any like terms in that numerator. And we want to organize it appropriately in descending order. So we need n squared first, and then we have 5n minus n, which would be a positive 4n, and then plus our 5, all over that denominator of n minus 1 times n plus 1. Now because we have a trinomial in the numerator, we need to see if we can factor that. You're more than welcome to double check my math, but n squared plus 4n plus 5 doesn't factor. There are no two numbers that would multiply to 5 and also add to 4. So let's move on to example 2. Now step 1 is always to factor any polynomials that we can factor. Well our first rational expression can't be factored, so we can rewrite it as it is. Minus our second. Well, the numerator, 1, can't be factored, so we can keep that. But the denominator, x squared minus 4, that happens to be the difference of two squares. So that factors to x minus 2 times x plus 2. So now we can see that our LCM is going to be that difference of squares. It's going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2. So knowing that, we can rewrite our two rational expressions. I like to start with that denominator because I know what it is. It's x minus 2, x plus 2. And I know my second rational expression didn't have to be altered because it already had that common denominator. So the numerator stays as 1. So I'm really just concerned about that first rational expression because it went from a denominator of x minus 2 to a denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I needed to multiply by x plus 2. So I need to take my numerator 3 and also multiply that by x plus 2. Now I need to simplify my first numerator. So distributing the 3, I get 3x plus 6. And my denominator stays the same, x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then I'm subtracting that second rational expression, which is 1 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And now I can actually do the subtraction of these two rational expressions. So x minus 2, x plus 2 is my denominator. And I have 3x plus 6 minus 1. And that simplifies to 3x plus 5 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. Not too bad. Remember, factor anything you can factor first so that you can find that least common multiple. And then you start altering your rational expressions until you have a common denominator. And with a common denominator, you can add or subtract just like you would any other rational expression. Let's look at an application example. So we need to demonstrate that the expressions 1 over r plus 1 over s and s plus r over rs are equivalent. So let's start with 1 over r plus 1 over s. Well, what would the least common multiple be? Yeah, it's r times s. So we're going to rewrite those two fractions with denominators of r times s. Now, the first went from a denominator of r to a denominator of r times s. So I needed to multiply by s. So I also have to multiply the numerator by s. 
and s times 1 is just s. And then the second, I went from a denominator of s to a denominator of r times s. So I multiplied by r. And r times the numerator of 1 is just r. And now that we have a common denominator, rs, we can just add the numerators together, which is s plus r. And notice we got s plus r over rs, which is exactly the same as this. So we proved or demonstrated that those two expressions are indeed equivalent. Have a question or a problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.